Welcome to the Fights That Made Me podcast with myself, Umar Ahmed. I'm joined by the British middleweight champion himself, Too Sharp, Denzel Bentley. Now, this podcast is probably more appropriate for retired fighters yeah. um, go through their career, but you've had some notable fights. I know you're still in your prime and you're going to have many more fights that make you in your career, but you, as I said, you have had some notable fights. So I've picked out five fights for you. Yeah. Um, we're going to start with... Mark Efron, the first fight back yeah. in 2020. Uh, I'd yeah. say your first major step up, Denzel, uh, in class. Just talk to me about how that fight went and, and camp, etc. Oh uh, Yeah, most definitely my first real step up. At the time, he, he had more knockouts than I had fights. So um, it was definitely a real step up. It came at a mad time, like really, really um, early in my career because of COVID. I think the lockdown happened and it was one of them things where you take fights or you leave it. And I wanted to stay active. And it was a fight that I was essentially calling for at the time anyway, but it probably could have happened about, probably about two fights down the line with a little build up or something, but it just, it just came, up, came upon me and that was it. I mean, I think I even had short notice, I had about two and a half weeks notice for that first fight, so. Um, but it was a good fight. It was a good fight and going into it, I remember you were the underdog, weren't you? Yeah, I was the underdog, but that, that was obviously because I was only 13 and all at the time. I didn't really box anyone notable. He was flying through the ranks, doing his thing. Only lost to Liam Williams at the time, beating everyone. He was like, you know, the, the hot kid on the block at, at that point. So he was like, the, I think he was a favourite by, by a margin. Move on a couple of months later and you go in against Marco Front. Again, completely different fight, stopping yeah. him inside four rounds. What changed? Um, what changed? Uh, I'd, I'd had that experience now doing 10 rounds. I wasn't... I wasn't scared to go the distance no more. Even though I'd done it in the gym and I always felt, felt like I could do it. The difference was I'd done it now and I had that out of my mind. I had, I got, I had prep, a better preparation and I knew what I was going in for this time. So I knew what he'd done and what I can do to take away what he'd done. And he thought I couldn't change, which he, was his biggest mistake at that time. So I just thought, okay, I'm going to, instead of going backwards and trying to box, I'm going to step to him and, you know, put, put my feet down when I'm, when I'm throwing my shots. Landed a good shot, his eyes rolled up and the ref had to call it. And becoming British champ, talk to yeah, me about that. Yeah, becoming British champ, yeah. I mean, at, at the time, it was like, it came so quick. I, it, it, it didn't feel, um, it, it didn't feel real. It felt a bit like, oh, that was quick. Is, is that all it took to, to be British champ? You know what I mean? Um, it, there was, I just wanted, to, I wanted to beat him more than I wanted to be British champion as well at that time. I just needed to beat him, wherever that belt Why? was in the line. Because he was talking on it after the first fight. He kept trying to... He kept saying he thought he won and we were going back and forth on Twitter a little bit. He didn't really come out and do that at the press, but on Twitter a little bit. He's kind of getting on my nerves, talking like, oh, I'm a runner. I, I, I don't hit hard and I, I hit as hard as his daughter. And just a little, little, bit, little bit of banner. And I just thought, nah, nah, I really want to hurt you. So I wanted to hurt him more than I wanted to win the title. But that was the cherry on top, of course. So I was happy I won that. When did it sink in that you were British champion? Um, when I done that little tour around Ghana and <laughs> might have took it a bit too far but um, <laughs> yeah that's just what it was I mean that's when I realised okay okay I'm, I'm a champion now like this is what it comes with so what do you mean you took it too far yeah I mean I probably just enjoyed too much you know what I mean I, I, I got too high off, off of that moment as if like I'd done it and I hadn't there was, there was still more work to do um, and I just kind of soaked it up a bit too much and was living in that moment where I mean sometimes you can but I should have snapped back to reality a bit sooner than I did well, that leads me on to April 2021. Yeah. Where you suffered your first loss in your professional career against Felix Cash. This was deemed as a 50-50 fight going into it. Yeah. Um, what went wrong? <laughs> Everything, bro. <laughs> Everything. I mean, coming back from holiday, getting a date, cool. That's, that's normal. Um, I'm training, training. I'm just doing everything wrong. Um, probably the heaviest I'd been starting the camp at that point. Uh, no nutritionist, no nothing. I'm just doing everything on my own. So I'm eating wrong, making weight wrong, training, doing everything I need to do in training. Training's fine. Um, but just everything outside of training, I'm just getting in bed whenever I want to go to bed. I'm just taking it as a flat. Okay, you go in there and you fight. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not appreciate, appreciating the preparation side of things. Like, okay, we need to actually be, you need to prepare like in every, every avenue, like just not just in the gym. It's like in school, you go and we've got to do homework. To put, I weren't doing the stuff I was meant to do outside of the gym, so. I mean, I didn't really feel uh, my best. And obviously he took that very seriously. He had his old camp set up and everything. And then we just got in there and I, it was just, it just, it was an off day. It was just mad weird. We got in there and I just heard his family or uh, some kids shouting, oh, let's go catch them. I looked up like, wait, no one's allowed in here. So that already threw me off. Then we got in there and what happened, happened. Innit? Yeah, what was it like boxing in lockdown? Was it weird? 
it was weird. Then I got used to it. Um, and then when the crowd came back the first time, then I thought well, that was a bit weird. It was like I'd, I had, I think I had like four fights in lockdown after after the second Heffron fight. No, because I fought Mick Hall first. Yeah. So by the time I fought Heffron the second time, it, it felt kind of normal to me. It was like, okay, yeah, this is what it is. Felix just seemed too much for you on the night um, yeah. in terms of size, strength, power. It looked like he was a super middleweight. Yeah. You're a light heavyweight against a, a middleweight um, in there. Did you feel like you were getting bullied in there at times, Denzel? You know what? It, it, it wasn't even so much his physicality that was um, bothering me. It was... Um, he had he had heavy heavy hands and no fast. His fast his hands he had good hand speed and that was what was kind of throwing me off. And then I'm just like kind of thinking to myself, all right, cool, um, all right, get it together. We'll, we'll judge the distance. We'll get his pace going. And I was just all over the place. My feet were all over the place. I was moving my head. Chin was high. I I, I think I overreacted to his pressure too much, which was something I told myself I'd never do again. So now I'm a lot more relaxed in the ring and a lot more. Chilled. I'm not. I don't. I don't react to anyone's pressure on no But I think I was reacting. I was overreacting to his pressure too much, and he was just letting his hands go. He was comfortable. And the shot that he hit me with that took me out. I actually didn't even feel. I thought I was nervous. I'm talking to him. I'm like, hey, what are you doing, Denzel? Like, Come on, man. Like, get yourself together. And he's just throwing like three, four shots at me. But I'm not feeling it. And the refs jumped in. I'm like, yo, like, what are you doing? Like, as I'm getting my legs back, I'm moving. The refs jumped in. And I'm just like, oh, he said you're gonna give us a chance, but it's what it is, isn't it? Move on from there. Seems like from what you've just said in terms of preparation in camp, in terms of how you structure your camp and even inside the ring, you learned a lot from that loss? Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%, man. I just learned a lot about myself as well. Like, what am I going to do? Am I, am I just going to hide from everyone or am I going to try and get straight back out there? I remember going straight back to the gym the next day like, and just telling them, look, I, I, I need to get out straight away. I need another date. Like, I don't want to sit on that because everyone's going to keep asking me what happened and I don't want that to be the last thing I've done. So. I was itching to get a fight for long after that. I mean, so you didn't take a break from the gym? No, 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 no. I didn't take a break. I, I went to the gym, spoke to Martin and Tony, and then um, I had my week off. After my week off, I came back in the gym and I was just in there trying to get another date. We almost went Russia because we couldn't get a date. And then, as we were finalising things, it's like, yeah, Sunny Ed was on the card, then that fell through, and then whatever. Then I managed to get out of Birmingham after. Did you feel like you needed a break though after that? Nah, mentally, I, I didn't want one. I didn't want one. I felt like if I took a break, I'd just be feeling sorry for myself. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to be sitting in my room and, oh, yeah, I lost. It was all right. And everyone around me saying, oh, don't worry. I don't want to hear that stuff. I don't like people feeling sorry for me. Or just, I don't really like sympathy in that. OK, so you, you made yourself busy. You got straight back into the gym and you were focused on fighting again. But did you, especially early on after that fight, did you question yourself a bit or not? Yeah, it was like, Oh, wow, like, how can I just go out like that? Like, am I really that good? Like, how good are these guys? Like, so how am I going to get to world level if someone like domestic level? All of these things. And then it was like, ah, so now what can I do to change that? What can I do to improve? Or what can I do to get better? Or what can I do to, you know what I'm saying, like, make that a distant me me uh, memory? So, got back in the gym, started working on certain things. Um, well, the first probably month or so, I was just angry at everything. So, I'm, I'm sparring angry. I'm hitting the bags angry, I'm hitting the pads angry, just thinking I've got to be more aggressive because of the way I, I felt I performed. I felt like I just got, um, just like manhandled a little bit. So, um, and then obviously after I calmed down, I just started thinking, all right, cool. So I talked to certain people, talked to one, two guys. Oh, you got nutritionists? Oh, how does that work? I, I jump on that. Oh, you do a bit of strength training. Oh, what, how does that, give me the number, jump on that. And then I just started picking up things as I went along and, um, added things to my game where I thought at first I couldn't work any harder. I realised that I can work harder, but obviously in different aspects of things like, do you know what I'm saying? You can always do more than you think you're doing. Mm -hmm. I know you're with different promoters and you've been at world level now, challenged for a world title. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with him, but is that something important to you later on in your career to 100%. rectify that? It is. 100%, yeah, 100%. I need that. I, that way, the way I went out, I, everything I do now is oh, cash blast my three rounds though. I could win a world title, and someone will still say that. So I'm, I need to, that needs to, yeah, I, I need to rectify that. Do you think it'll happen? I hope it. Well, I've always said I hope he keeps doing well in his career, just so that I can get that back. Like, I don't want him to fall off, like just obviously for selfish reasons, because I want to be the one to, you know, give him, give him his first loss, like he gave me my first loss and all these things. But of course, he's he's got to keep progressing in his career. I don't want to get him. Oh, he's been out for five years, and I'm I've got a world title, and he wants opportunity, and it's like, yeah, come then, and just fight. Nah, I need him to keep doing well. So when I do beat him, it's like I beat the best version of you. Not I've got your not just like oh, 
I got your name on my record now and you, you hadn't fought well in like five years and no one's seen you or no one, you know what I'm saying, you haven't developed, so I, I need him to do well. It was, it was a, it was a barn burner really, a split decision win for yourself. Um, and you had to, you had to really grit yourself through it at times yeah. um, and show your dog rather <laughs> than just your abilities. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I knew he was a good fighter because I hadn't sparred him or been in the ring with anything from before, but I, I watched him and, you know, he, he's, he's quite fluid, he flows, he, he lets his hands go. And I think the fight that I watched the most was the one against John Arlen Jr. because that was his best performance for me. And that's when I just thought that, that like, I was watching everything he does well. I was trying to, you know, kind of take that away from him, like make sure he doesn't do this or he's not able to do that. He started that fight real fast, but I think that was the blueprint for everyone after the cash fight. Start fast, he starts slow, you'll catch him cold, you'll get him, whatever. And I think that's why he started fast. But then I kind of paced myself and as the later rounds came on, I just started landing the shots that I was looking for and just, just took over after, after, like, after just before the halfway mark. I kind of just took over after that. He had a good first four rounds. He had a good first four rounds. He had not seen anyone every round, but that's when he looked his best. After that, when they got to that five, six, then he just started fading and I started picking up the pace and, uh, yeah, just got the better of it. And becoming two-time British champ. Becoming two-time British champ. That's when it really felt good. Like, yeah, what a journey. Like, I'm back. Like, that's when it really felt... It felt better than the first time, 100%. I mean, not many people have done that. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. So, that's an achievement in itself. Then, uh, later on that year, uh, your first um, world title challenge, uh, November 2022, in Las Vegas. Uh, something that all young fighters dream of doing. So, let's yeah. just talk about that firstly. Going to Las Vegas... Yeah, must have been a whole different experience. Yeah, that was crazy because I'd I'd never been. There. I've always wanted to go there for like fights, but I'd never actually been there. I didn't think the first time I'd go there would be for me boxing for a world title. So that was crazy in itself. So we explored the city a little bit. Um, went to the mayor of the gym to look at it, and they just invited me down there to train there. They obviously, they heard I was fighting for a world title. Next day, so even training out of Floyd's gym was was a madness. Like I watched that on YouTube. That's like all access, hmm. and I'm watching it, and then I'm now I'm there. I'm training there. I mean, I wish I had like a little videographer to go around and like show my experience. That would have been sick, but I enjoyed it, man. I was there for about three weeks. Went there quite early before the fight, so I was there for a while, man. It was a good experience, like seeing my face on the billboards in Vegas, and it's like, wow, man. Like, but I didn't want it to, to to get to me there. I wanted to fight and win and then soak it all up, and that would have been an even better experience, but it was a good experience all around. Did it get to you partly in fight week? Um, not really, because I got on fight week. That's when I started feeling a little bit of disrespect from the promoters and what was going on. I, I was just basically invited over as a body mm. to to make Yanabet look good. That was a showcase for Yanabet. So when I'm saying that like, I'm here to win, they look at me like, "Well, why do you think you're gonna win?" So I'm saying as if like I, I stood no chance. But I mean, the whole world, apart from my team, thought I had no chance anyway. So didn't really take it to heart. But I was like, All right, "Cool, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not here for." To be a part of this event, I'm just I'm just here to, for someone to show their skills. I'm meant to be a body to them, so I re that really made gave me a little extra bit of uh, now. Nah, I really need to, to to you know get this towel and earn the respect. But I guess I earned the respect, but I didn't look out. Talk about the start of the fight because that is a, a big talking point because you really grow into the fight, and, and many people feel like if you did make a, a positive start, you could have uh, dethroned Janovic. Um Talk to me about your approach in the sort of first or four or five rounds. I mean, like. It was a bit, I was, I was trying to figure him out. So I probably took four hours too long. But <laughs> I mean, like the first round or two was, you know, trying to figure him out because I've, I've never seen him as a puncher. When everyone kept saying he's an good and I thought, all right, keep gassing his head like that and he's going he's gonna to have trouble. But what he is is a skillful guy. He's got mad skill. So I thought, okay, let me just feed him out, see where he's trying to set me up and try and get this under my belt and figure out what he does quite early. But he kept changing what he was doing, the way he was close with his lead foot, but he was fought, he was out of distance. So every time I threw a shot, he'd lean back and come back with a one-two, and I thought, I can't keep getting caught, caught with this. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to get inside. And previously, when I watched him before, everyone that set their feet, he, he let his hands go on them. So I thought, don't set your feet. Don't set your feet, because that's when he's getting his work off. So just keep moving and try and find where you can box with him. And then it just got to the end of the fourth round, and I kind of like pressed him towards the end of the fourth. And then when I went back to the corner, my coach was like, that's how you have to fight the rest of this fight. We're not, we're not winning this fight. Keep pressing him. Like, it's working then. You come out in the fifth round and I just kind of stepped in him again and I thought, you know, physically, you're, you're not 
you're not, you're not the strongest and you're feeling my shots because you're not letting your hands go when I'm inside. So I just thought, all right, keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. Before. And then I hit him with a body shot. And I heard him kind of like, oh, and I thought, oh, snap, I got you. So, and I couldn't find that shot again, but it was probably smart in there. But yeah, I mean, if I figured out two rounds earlier pressing him, I probably, probably could have hurt him later on in that fight. And I don't know, but I've never seen him knocked out, but who knows? Probably could have helped him out. <laughs> fight in the South Pole? First time fighting the South Pole. Yeah, first time fighting the South Pole. Um, I didn't find it too difficult because I don't look too much into that. I think people kind of wrap their brains around who's a South Pole, who's not, who's orthodox and what to do and that is just fighting. Once we're in close, he ain't got that South Pole advantage no more. We're both mm. basically square, just throwing shots. So I wasn't really too bothered about the South Pole, but at distance, he was using his South Pole ability really well. Was there many regrets from that night? No, not any regrets. Just not starting. Just not starting two rounds earlier, man. I wish I started two rounds earlier. But then again, just the, one of the judges gave me two rounds. So even if I did start two rounds earlier, I probably wasn't winning that fight anyway. <laughs> but I mean, I did hurt him a few times. I know I hurt him. I hit him with a good uppercut in the in the eighth round. I mean, if I could have capitalized off that, you know, doing all my work early, because I felt I'm getting tired in there as well. I felt I'm getting tired in there. So I, I know if I get that rematch, I've got, I've got to beat him. Well, yeah, that. That is something, I think there was a, a contrast in, in how people thought of you in your two losses. I think after the cash fight, everyone was like, where's yeah. Denzel already at? And then in the World Title Challenge, where everyone wrote you off against Janabek yeah. in Vegas, really, it was such a close fight and a very good performance from yourself in the first World, world Title Challenge that people were like, oh, Denzel will, is world level and yeah. he could definitely become a world champion one day. But I know that for us, it was like that, but for you inside, it, it was still a loss. That. Yeah, no, I was still at, at that time. It was still a loss. I was so I was fuming. I was like, "Come on, man! I had it and I let it slip. Like this was my moment." Then I got back and I saw the positive feedback, and I thought, "You know what? Maybe I'm, I'm still in there. I ain't, it's, it's not over. I'm, I'm still in there. I, I can still, you know, get, get to where I need to be." Like the people are saying, "I done well." But in my in my heart, it was like I had the chance and I, and I and I and I lost it. You know what I mean? I let it slip. So I was I was really upset at myself. But it, it was hard to stay down for long when. People are still saying that we want, we still want to see you fight, and still want to see you fight these guys and go well. So that means I can continue my career. Essentially, I'm not, I'm not in a place where it's, oh, he lost that now, I can't I'm leaving there. And a lot of people go through that. A lot of people have a world title shot, and then they lose, and then they're nowhere to be seen after. You know what I mean, it's kind of hard for them to get back to a certain level. Whereas I'm, I'm all right. I'm, I'm still back in championship fights, albeit as British title, which is, you know, I'm the champion also. I've got an obligation to, to fill, and yeah, man, it won't be long to get back at world level. So it's good. Definitely, and uh, yeah, you've been in some big fights, as I said, and got another one coming up uh, November 18th against Nathan Heaney. And uh, I'm sure once we do this, once you're retired and uh, a world champion, yeah, we'll discuss those fights. But uh, yeah, for now, Denzel, thank you very much for talking about the fights that have made you thus far uh, on this podcast. Just to end, uh, we have a wild card question. So, as a fighter yourself, if you could pick one fighter, past or present, that you could share a ring with, who would it be and why? Um, Marvin Hagler. That would be that would just be a grueling fight. Do you know what I mean? I, I've always said that first. He's probably the one person I wouldn't fight, but that's made me think that would probably be the one person if I could fight, I would fight because I know it would be a dog fight. Like, he'd probably stop me, but it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> one of your favorite fighters, Mark? Yeah, hundred percent, one hundred percent. At the time, I didn't appreciate him. I was more a Leonard guy, but as I've gone back and watched all these things, all these all these fights, I mean, he's here, man. He's a dog, and Aaron Pryor is obviously on my way, but yeah. Okay, Denzel, as I said, appreciate your time. Uh, please like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you.